Hey everybody, welcome back to Organic Chemistry. My name is Todd Rothman, and in this video, we're going to start to learn about Chapter 18, Alpha Carbon Reactions. Okay, so at this point, it's very, very important that Chapters 16 and 17, which is aldehydes, ketones, and acids and derivatives, are under control for you. You, you get the concepts, you've done your practice, you've worked it through. Okay, it's really important that you do this because the next two chapters, 18 and 19, is a different focus but on the same molecules. And so if you're not comfortable with the foundation of 16 and 17, then you're going to be overwhelmed as you learn 18 and 19, okay? So for now, you're just learning 18, right? And then for the next exam, it'll be 19. But so let me start by just going over a quick, like, uh, overview, like a big picture here, okay? So what we're deal dealing with, and what makes this so hard for students, is that there are so many reactions related to this, this classification of carbonyl chemistry, right? So it makes it kind of hard. So I want to just point out that what we're doing, basically, is we have, for chapter 16 and 17, we've learned about, let's say this is Z. Well, we've learned about a nucleophile being able to come into the carbonyl, right? So we've talked about what's called the carbonyl type reactions when you go into the carbonyl carbon, right? And so that's this is chapter 16 and 17. So 16 was ketones and aldehydes, and 17 was acid and derivatives. Okay, now for the next few chapters, next two, and then we're going to continue for the rest of the semester, even after these chapters, is we're going to start to learn about things that happen on the alpha carbon or the beta carbon, okay? And so, like, remember I mentioned to you that you, you should know as far as, as epsilon, so alpha, beta, gamma, whoops, gamma, come on, give me red, gamma, delta, epsilon, okay? So you should know these right here. And what we're going to learn for chapters 18 and 19 is that if you have something positive, that the positive group here, whatever this is, see it's the opposite of this one, here's a nucleophile coming in, right? But if you have something positive, then that positive can attach itself to the alpha carbon, sometimes beta carbon sometimes gamma, delta, epsilon. So really it's between alpha and beta. So sometimes it'll attach here, sometimes it'll attach there, and we'll learn about the reasoning for that. All right? So actually let me just give you a big picture so that you can kind of get a sense of what's happening. So what we're going to learn is that sometimes we get something there, but let's say for example I have the same structure but I have E plus as well, right? This is chapter, e, uh, this is actually chapter 19. So I have E plus, and let's say there's a double bond, there's an alpha beta double bond. Well, then in chapter, for chapter 18 actually, we would put it on the gamma position. So we would have an E plus going here, E. Okay, so that's the gamma substitution. This is chapter 18, okay? But for chapter 19, what we'll learn, in addition, for chapter 19, is that we can have E plus go into the beta position. So you say, you see how it gets confusing, right? It, it's really not that bad, at when, and you'll see soon enough, but here's a beta substitution. So here's alpha, beta, here's gamma, here's alpha, here's beta, right? So we can have things like this happen. And so for the chapter 16 and 17, it's all about the direct. It's having a nucleophile come in so we have like uh, Z and having a nucleophile and then deciding what to do from here. Do we close it down and make this leave? Do we leave it open, right? If it's an aldehyde or a ketone, then this stays open. If it's a acid and hydride or I should say carboxylic acid or any derivative, then it leaves. It closes back down, right? So we've learned about that for 16 and 17. For 18 and 19, it's all about these things here. Okay, so we're going to learn about putting things alpha, we're going to learn about putting things beta, we're going to learn about putting things gamma, and we're going to get a general idea of how all this works. Okay, that's what we're doing. And then, of course, we're going to learn about what E plus is, right? That's very different. Now, notice that for chapter 16 and 17, we have a nucleophile, whereas something that has electrons, and now we have something that doesn't have electrons. 
Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Now, in order to even begin any of this, we have to start by just understanding the key, the driving feature that even allows 18 and 19 reactions to occur. And that's known as alpha acidity. Okay, so let's start there. Let's talk about alpha acidity. So alpha acidity is actually, it's not really, I don't want you to think of it as alpha acidity. I want you to think of it as allylic acidity because that is really the characteristic here that we're working with. And we've talked about that last semester. We've learned about allyl, right? Well, remember what allylic is? When you have a double bond, it's the atom that's next to the double bond, right? So these two here are allylic. And why is that? Because the allylic is the sp3 carbon next to, and very important, sp3, see that? To a double bond. So it can't be that it's sp2 itself. It can't be a double bond. It has to be a single bond that's directly attached to a double bond atom. And that's what we have here. So it turns out that this carbon and that carbon, out of all this structure here, they're acidic. They're considered acidic because they're next to a double bond. Okay? And so their H's are acidic. Now let's see why. Okay? And I think you know why, just from last semester. If I have a base, if I have some sort of base, and I make either one of those two carbons negative, here or there, right? you can see that by using a, uh, a base and pulling off a proton here or here, that by I could do that or I could do that, and in both cases I have resonance stabilization. That's the key idea. Remember that from last semester. We said that whenever you have an alpha... Um, an allylic, I should say, allylic carbon, that the allylic carbon, when it loses a proton, has resonance to stabilize. So this has resonance, and that has resonance. And that's the driving characteristic here. So carbons are normally not acidic, right? They're not very good acids, but they become better when they're next to double bonds because of resonance. So the driving feature is resonance stabilization. And so that's why we wouldn't even think about pulling off an H from the beta carbon or the gamma or the delta or the epsilon or any other carbon around. Only the carbons next to this double bond here. Okay? That's the only place that we would pull from. Now, you might say, well, which one's more acidic? And we'll get into that. Not now. That's not important right now. What's important is to understand why there is such a thing called alpha acidity. Right? Notice how these are the alpha carbons. They're the carbons next to the carbonyl, right? Okay, so that's it right there. This is the driving characteristic. Now, there's a few things to think about, right? When you, when you consider that there's alpha acidity, well, once it's negative, this carbon's negative, well, then I can see how E plus, something positive, can come into it, right? So this is kind of why we need a kickstart. We need to get this negative to begin. And now I'm showing you how that happens. But we have to think about the bigger picture here, right? Because we don't know about just ketones. We know about esters and acehalides and, and hydrides and aldehydes and all these other functional groups, right? So how do they come together in this chart? How do we uh, organize them? Well, that's what we're going to talk about next. But before I do that, I want to point out one more simple concept because it's really important that you get the details. Okay, so how do we determine which alpha carbon is more acidic that's what i want to think about for a moment and then we're going to add a, we're going to put a chart together that's going to summarize this for us okay but let's talk about the how how does how do we do this what what would we consider well first off let's think about a few characters there's aldehydes right and there's ketones now the key here is that this carbon here and this carbon there, th those two carbons are positive, right? They're partial positive. And now, we know that a ketone is less positive than an aldehyde, right? Because of chapter 16, we learned that. We were told that it has, ketones have more inductive, more hyperconjugation than aldehydes. So, if I ask you which one of these two needs negative more, and by the way, why is it partial positive? Because when this opens up, right, through resonance, you get the carbon positive down below. 
So sometimes it's positive and sometimes it's neutral, but it's a combination of the two that you think about. So the fact that there's a carbon neighbor here, alpha, and there's two...